Hey guys, home is back. As you can guess by now, I tend to upload my videos when my mind gives me the go. But anyway, I'm back to discuss a completed manga I have read quite a while ago. Actually, I think this was one of my first manga ever. Its name is Stepping on Roses, or in Japanese, Hadashi de Bara wo Fume. This manga is created by Rinko Ueda, and its genre are romance, drama, and history. Enjoy! This manga revolves around a 15 years old girl named Sumi Kitamura. She lives in a small house in rural Japan in the Meiji era. She lives there with her adoptive brother and few orphaned toddlers, or at least I think they're orphaned kids. Her household is poverty stricken to the point she has to sell herself in order to get the money to feed and treat one of the sick kids. This leads to her agreeing to be the wife of a rich man named Soichiro Ashida in exchange for money. At first, she gets, has trouble getting used to her new life and having a stranger as a husband who isn't always nice. She's also very conflicted with his best friend, Nozomu, who she has a small crush on. And the feeling seems to be mutual, but as the story progresses, Sumi and her husband Soichiro gets to know each other and understand each other better. However, this is where their life is up, tr turned upside down and Soichiro loses all his wealth. So they have to start from the bottom up and build their lives together. And Nozomu becomes a problem as well as the con uh, financial issues as he tries to win Sumi for himself. This is all I will tell you because I don't want to spoil anything else, but just to give you hope, the story has the perfect ending. As I have mentioned earlier, Sumi is only a 15 years old girl. She is a very kind-hearted, respectful and responsible young woman who puts the well-being of her family above all else. She has been taking care of multiple children in this such young age all by herself as the parents seem to be non-existent in their lives and the older brother is preoccupied with women and gambling all the time. Even as she begins her new life as a rich man's wife when she is wearing nice clothes and eating good food, she can't help but worry about how her siblings are doing and if they're being taken care of or not. She seems to love taking care of others, especially children, as she tries to better her siblings' lives as well as other children through education and nurturing. You should definitely read the manga to find out what she did. She can be a good inspiration. Even though she might have seemed infuriating when she soons over Nozomu at the beginning, she straight stays true to her husband and family all the time, altogether being the moral support for everyone during the harshest days. The next character I'm going to talk about is Soichiro Ashira. Soichiro is the young master of the Ashira financial group. He is most likely in his early 20s as his age is not mentioned on the manga as far as I know. He is a very stoic, level-headed, and ambitious, sometimes ruthless young man. In the manga, he focuses and works hard on becoming the successor of the family, going as far as to buying Sumi Kitamura as his wife, in order to meet his grandfather's conditions on inheritance. He at times seems heartless, but is a man of his words, and as promised to Sumi, pays her family properly. As he learns to relax and let go of his uptight ways with Sumi, he shows a much more innocent part of him. I honestly love this transitional part of him the best when he's falling for Sumi and all because I think this makes his handsomeness triple. He continues to work hard even after the inheritance and when he falls into bad times and he tries to create a good life for everyone, including himself. And this part of him not only makes Sumi, but the readers fall in love with him as well. In my other videos, I tend to talk about other characters, but in this manga, there weren't many characters to really talk about. 
Uh, and they weren't too interesting. I mean, they w were good characters. For example, Sumi's brother uh, was a gigolo, but he was also a very good man, and he loves his sister, and at the end played a good role. But again, he's a typical big brother, and so is Sumi's younger siblings, the b kids. They're they're adorable, they're sweet, and but that's the thing. That's how all the manga kids are. They're sweet and adorable. Uh, the only characters really stood out to me, other than the main ones, were Soichiro's butler, Komai, who is a very humorous character for a butler, and his loyalty to Soichiro was very admirable to me. And the other character was Nozomu. Soichiro's best friend. He really boiled my blood. I mean, I know that's that must have been the goal for for the character as he's the antagonist at the end, but I mean, he starts off as this perfect prince, goody two shoes, but and what he does and how to like his twisted mind kind of really annoyed me. Well, not kinda, it really did annoy me, but I mean, I'm just glad he found his way back to reality and sanity and um, got out of Soichiro and Sumi's love life. Now, it's time to talk about why I love this manga. I mean... I think you have already guessed by how much I talked about the characters, but I mean, what's not to love? You have beautifully drawn characters, the, the drawing is amazing, very clean, and then you have a great story that can totally be related in real life. People do the craziest things for their family and money. And Sumi is lucky to have been spotted by Soichiro when she was selling herself, as things can get a lot uglier in real life. This manga does not necessarily uh, have a totally original uh, story and original plot, as they have the rich guy, poor girl uh, situation going on, but it's I think the way the conflict and the plot twists have been presented to the readers were perfectly executed. I mean, I read this manga very slowly. I went back to the chapters a month later or two months later and just to find out what happens to the next next chapter and I waited for the updates. But that's the thing, I usually don't. I usually get impatient. That's why I usually read completed series. But this series it kept me going in the span of a year or two years I was reading it. And because the drama had been so perfect and the chapters themselves were put together so nicely that I was intrigued as to find out what happens next. And whenever I went back, this all the emotions all the things that had happened uh, in the previous chapters, they all come back and the emotions really get riled up for the readers. And especially if the emotions are easy to rile up for you, just like mine. But no matter what you feel in this manga while reading it, and if you feel anger, if you feeling like, oh my god, I cannot take this anymore kind of thing, you know what? The ending is perfectly worth it. It leaves you with this bubbly warm happiness from the satisfaction you get from how good the outcome is, how good they have it at the end, how nicely the problems get resolved. I still reread this manga often because I love how it ended and I just go back to to feel the, that satisfaction again. And I'm sure you'd love it and just because of the ending and just because of the characters, you would not regret it for a moment. Thank you guys for listening till now and I hope to upload another video very soon as this is the summer vacation. I have a lot more time in my hand. Hopefully I don't get lazy and hopefully I find 
a good manga to review or just you know remember one of the good mangas i did read long time ago so stay tuned thank you